gun safes. I tell you right now, there's a lot more involved in the manufacturing of gun safes than I ever even fathomed. Every time I visit the shop we're about to go to, I learn a lot more. This is a true educational video on the differences in gun safes and the manufacturing of gun safes. My buddy Kurt, who I purchased all of my Fort Knox safes from, I have all my safes throughout the state of Florida, different locations, and Kurt's a professional. And as you're about to see, he's extremely articulate and he knows his stuff. So whether you're in the market to buy a safe now, or someday years from now, come back to this video and watch and listen to Kurt because he'll teach you on the questions you need to ask and the knowledge you need to have. Knowledge is power. I think you'll enjoy this. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but I tell you what, when we spend our hard-earned money on a pricey product like a safe, whether it be six, eight hundred dollars, thousand dollars, or three, four thousand dollars, you want to have the knowledge. Knowledge is power. By the way, welcome to WeaponsEducation.com. Let's go inside. Here we are at CE Safes. My friend Kurt, the owner, is inside. He's going to give us a tour of his facility. They just moved to this new location. I'm in Deerfield Beach, Florida. The C stands for Kurt. E is his wife Elizabeth. CE Safes, Deerfield Beach, Florida. And this is their premier showroom. Kurt has got to be, or well, he is, he is the most knowledgeable person in the United States on safes. And there's a lot more to gun safes than you might think. So let's go inside and take a tour. Kurt, it's always a pleasure to come to your facility. Thank you so much for giving us a tour of this new facility you're at. How long have you been here now? Oh, since July 1st. We're still doing a lot of major workings on it. Okay, well, let's take a look. Congratulations. You've been here about seven months. I was at your other facility, and uh, you were just moving then. You've come a long way. And, well, how long have you been in business? Since 1989? Since, since 1989. Well, there's a lot more to safes than people realize, correct? There is. There is. It, and the safe industry has changed dramatically in the last 12 years. And basically what, what it's done is it's lightened up the metal while concealing what they've been doing. And the consumers really get confused when they come into the store after calling on the Internet because they don't know what a composite door is. They don't know what, what, what plate edge means. And so what they're doing is they're buying something completely different than what they think they're buying. And so one of the purposes of our business is to educate. Because we specialize, we like to educate and make sure that every one of our customers understands what they're buying. There's a big difference between a Fort Knox safe like this and the imports as you walk on down here. Okay. About 12 years ago, roughly that time period, the manufacturers decided to, to bring their safes into mass merchant stores, which really greatly increased the visibility of the safes. The problem is, is that most mass merchants are not in the safe business, they're not in the security business, so price is real big with them. Price points is a term that you'll hear all the time. And what happened is, is that as they did this, the qualities of the safe had to go down to meet these price points. And eventually, most of the American production uh, is, is out of country right now, primarily in China with a little bit in Mexico. And so what happens is, is that customers need to understand what, what the different types of safes are. For example, when you, look at a, when you look at a safe like this and you look at this and you say, wow, that, that's a pretty thin door. This is 3 8 inch steel. This is not a thin door. This is an excellent door. But what happens is, is that they see on the internet and they hear terms called composite. And you'll look at this and this composite door right here has less than one third of the steel of the first uh, uh, plate steel that you saw. Hmm. And this is one of the things that all the times when the customers are coming in, what we like to do is we like to take them to this safe, and what I'd like you to do is move this safe back and forth for me. All right, so when you move this safe back and forth, what you're going to find is the safe feels a, a, a certain weight to it. Then we take them around a the corner to a Fort Knox safe, and what they do the same thing, but it's advertised as the same door, an inch and three quarter inch composite. And the customers go in there and say, well, this door feels like three or four times as heavy. Well, it's because it is three or four times as heavy. So you've asked the wrong question. The right question is, how much steel is in this massive door? And the next thing is, is if you hear manufacturers talking about this area as being security, this isn't security at all. This is just a frame to hide moving parts. That's all it is. 
And so when you hear about this massive seven inch door, this massive seven inch door or three inch door or five inch door might have less than an eighth of an inch of steel, commonly referred to as 12 gauge. There is a reason and, and customers need to understand that there is a reason why safes cost different amounts of money. It's because what has gone into them and where they're made and how the welding is done. You don't want a spot welded safe. You want a safe that is a continuous weld. And there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go on video as to a reason for that because I don't like giving people ideas of how you can uh, short circuit a safe. I want to point out for you something if I can today. It's a safe that Rhino Safe Company out in Idaho uh, has made for, uh, for, for our company. And so what happens is, is I, I don't like selling imports. I, wa I want to sell American products. Let me take a look on the inside. Yeah. And so what we did is we co-developed an American-made safe in here that is, that is near the uh, import pricing except far better. This quote-unquote skinny door of a quarter inch is, has two times the metal of the Rhino safe called Bighorn. It's an imported safe. And you look at this door, it has less than one half the steel of their quarter inch plate door right here. What's the difference in price? The difference in price of that safe is going to be anywhere from $599 to $699 and you'd be able to pick up this safe for $1249. What you have is double the steel in the door, you have a heavier body, you have a continuous weld frame, you have, you have your inside piece right here in your frame reinforced so when your four-way bolt work goes around the door what you have is you have a secure locking mechanism and you have the holes in the corner. One of my pet peeves of having quote unquote import safes is what they like to do is they like to put two holes in the center and negate the fact that you can bolt a safe down properly. Having two holes in the middle of the floor doesn't do anything for bolt down. And remember something, they're going to attack a safe four different ways that I have found in my 19 years of doing this. Which the first thing they want to do is they want to steal the safe. So if you buy a safe and don't bolt it down, that's like buying an alarm without putting it on. Big mistake. The second thing they try to do is they try to pry it, and I'm going to take you through these doors and show you the messier part of, uh, of my uh, building here that we have not developed yet in the back here. I have two businesses. This is the smaller of the two, and I want to show you a safe of what happens when they try to attack way number two. Way number two is this is a quarter inch plate door that what happened is, is that I figured that they worked on this for one to two hours, probably with three people. They bent quarter inch steel. They never got into this safe. This is one of the reasons why I like to see my customers start at a quarter inch plate door with four way bolt work. This worked and saved the customer over $150,000 uh, that was in this safe. It was bolted, it never moved, so we made them start prying from an upward position as opposed to on the floor. The third way that they attack a safe, and which, what, what is my obsession, is the cutting of a non-torch cutting tool. This is an 11 gauge body on a safe. And so we're very concerned in our business about the cutting and at least making customers aware that safes can be penetrated. And remember that when they do a security, uh, their, what they call their RSC rating, and in English to you, that's a residential security container, when they do that test, it's for the door only and not for the body. So the body on most safes is one half to one third of what the door is in actual metal content until recently with imports, sometimes the door are, is the same as what the body is. That is unfortunate from your standpoint. The fourth way that they'll attempt to get into a safe is, 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 with, uh, excuse me, is with torches and that's relatively rare. And can these be negated? Yes, you can. But if you want to try to stop the cutting, if you want to try to stop the torching, one of the things that you're going to have to do is want to invest in a safe, not buy a safe, invest in a safe, and get extra metals and stainless steel and anti-heat materials that will dissipate the, the heat and won't allow a hole to be burned into it. So you can custom make a safe with Fort Knox, for instance. That's where I've I purchased all my safes from you. They're all Fort Knox. Can we talk about Fort Knox for a yes. moment? Yeah, Fort Knox is, 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 our, is, is the backbone of our business. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to take a basic safe and, and add metal to it. 
And so when you get a safe that is a door like this, you don't know what the steel is. Fort Knox will tell you in the brochure. And I want all manufacturers to begin telling people what the actual metal content is in the door. You have two pieces of metal in this safe that is uh, a 10 gauge and a quarter. And in English, 10 gauge means a little over uh, an eighth of an inch and then a quarter inch plate on the back. This is the part that's going to stop people, not this behind here outside of the bolts. This is a frame. There's no metal in here to stop. This is just to hide moving parts. So I can take this door with Fort Knox that is 10 gauge and a quarter and make it 10 gauge but make the back piece 3 8 and make another piece 3 8 almost an inch of steel if that's what you want. What about the side walls? And in the body, the body has one piece of metal. This is three parts steel to one part steel. One piece of 10 gauge. We can make this body a quarter inch on the outside and five pieces of 10 gauge on the inside almost an inch of steel. And so what happens is, is and one of those pieces of steel, if you want, can be stainless steel. That's your anti-heat for torch protection. So what are we trying to do when we're trying to stop cutters? We're stopping cutters by adding steel. Steel is going to stop and make people come in with a certain quality of tool that they don't normally do. And so the idea behind this is, is a safe, basically, you need to remember sometimes when you're buying an item, a security item, you're condensing all your portable wealth into a single location, into a steel box. And it is amazing how many people don't understand what, what the makeup is of that steel box. Well, we're they, learning now. They haven't got a clue. The first door I showed you there, the big horn, had less than one third of the steel that is in this, that is in this safe, but they're advertised identically. And so you, have, you need to learn to ask the right questions. And one of the suggestions I would make for you is I'm a free market person. So I don't care if you buy a safe at a mass merchant. But you need to understand that mass merchant purposes is price points not to sell you security. When you get specialists like myself, we start from the exact opposite mentality that says we want security per first and we want to try to get the best price we can for you. Now, Kurt, what if one of the viewers lives, say, in Oregon or California or Illinois or New Hampshire? How could you sell them a safe? We can sell a safe in, in, with, with, uh, with many of the vendors that I carry in, in certain locations. We have Florida for the most part with most of our vendors in the South Americas. And I have a network of other vendors that we would refer you to. And I have to ask permission from, uh, you know, from, from the manufacturers if I can sell in certain areas. But we'll be glad, I will be glad, to provide you with whatever information that you would want, you know, as far as is trying to help you find a, a professional vendor. We specialize in this. The people that I work with in our Summit Co-op group specialize in this. And so you're more apt to find a much better safe at one of these specialty stores than you will at a mass merchant. So you can give them some information over the telephone and you can give them advice as to where to go and their local zip code. Yes, we can. Now let me show you one other safe before we close here on this. We'll show you the Grafunder safe. People have heard about these on the website. This is an inch and a half of solid steel. Hmm. This isn't a composite door. So unlike the doors that you were seeing before composite, this is an inch and a half of solid steel with one inch in the body. Grafunder has a has a remarkable name, you know, to it. They make only one or two safes a day. There's only one reason why people will not buy a Grafunder safe, and that's price of the safe. What this does that is, cost? This is eleven thousand oh my gosh for the unit. <laughs> There's only one reason we find that customers won't buy the Fort Knox safes. What do they cost? Approximately? It's because yeah, because of the price. Like a safe like this would run you roughly thirty-seven hundred dollars plus options, you know, to the safe. So remember when you're looking at a safe like this and a Fort Knox safe and a, a safe in this size that might cost $2,000, there's a reason for it. It's how they're made. You know, the one thing, if I can impress you based on my 21 years of police work and 19 years doing this, look at a safe as an investment. If someone puts three rifles in front of you, low, medium, and high, and you pick the medium and high all the time, don't look at three safes, low, medium, and high, and say, do you have anything cheaper? if you want to get good results. Well, let's talk about the economy right now. Some people are out of work, some tight money is tight. If you're on a low budget, what is the best safe for the money? Let's take a look at that browning right there, for yeah. instance. Well, That's when you interesting. come in here, this is our alley up here that you can be looking at the brown, browning medallion series. This is one of their midline uh, areas where you would be uh, you would be spending roughly $2,300, $2,400 for. You can look at the Superior, which we consider to be an, an excellent safe in its price range. 
that you would be looking at spending between sixteen ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine for. I mean, anything's better than nothing. If Depending. you can't afford a three four thousand dollars safe, right. of course, well, anything's better than nothing. This is a three eight inch plate. It's a, it's an excellent buy. The Fort Knox safe in this area, which we consider the best in this range, is twenty three ninety nine plus, you know, plus options to it. What's for about a thousand dollars? Let's come on back over here. The thousand dollar safe that we're going to be looking for, in the. Uh, in the sizes, you're either going to have to go with an import or with this new Rhino series that we come in with different, with different sizes to it. I'm trying not to turn my back on you. It's okay. We're walking over here, so please don't consider me to be rude. When you get something like this at 12.49, or you get a smaller sister size of this, this is a 60 by 30 by 21 plus the handle. If you got the smaller sister, which is 56 by 27 by 18 plus the handle, you can get that for $9.99. All right, with a quarter inch door, four way bolt work, 11 gauge body, can't beat it. We consider it to be the best value uh, you know, that you're going to find anywhere. We challenge you to look to see if you can get this type of metal. Now that you know that this type of metal right here on your American one right here is more than twice as much metal as their imported version, same company. What about that Winchester safe? I see about six hundred dollars. Well, the Winchester safe you can pick up here for you know for four forty nine, four ninety nine. You know, on a safe, very light, fourteen gauge door. Uh, this I would I would suggest that you would uh, buy this safe for you know kids in the house, and this is not meant for serious storage. If you're going to be putting twenty, thirty thousand dollars in the safe. Uh, you're going to have to sit down there and bite your lip and, and spend a little bit more money. The door is very light on this safe. All safes have, per uh, have purposes. There is a purpose for a $500 safe. There is a purpose for a $10,000 safe. Make sure you measure what you're going to put inside with what you're going to spend. What about fire? I see these stickers on here, certified levels of one, two, three. How does that and work? You're going, to, you're going to find in the gun safe industry, there's no one single company that is going to test the safe as there is with Underwriter Laboratory, you know, which dominates the non-gun safe industry. So basically what you're going to find is different companies with different temperatures. You'll get anything from 20 minute or 30 minute or hour or 90 minute. And so you want to look at the labels that you're going to see on the safe. This one has a 20 minute label on it. This one would have an hour label on it, both import safes. Okay, and okay. And you would go on safes like the American-made safes that would go anywhere from a 50-minute on a Rhino to an hour on the Browning to 90-minute in the Superior brand that you see over here to 90-minute in the Fort Knox. Now remember something about fire liners. There are two numbers that go with a fire liner. Number one is is how long. Number two is, is what temperature that they tested it at. So if you want to make a fire test seem longer, you can do a two and a half hour test at 1200 degrees. Well, that's going to be the same as the temperature of 90 minute at 1680. All right. So there's two numbers you look at, both front and back, you know, on, on a safe. Interesting. All right. So now you learn like a safe like this, which doesn't look like very, very much, has now 200% more steel than the, than the average safes that have a composite inch to inch and three quarter door. This has a 90 minute fire rating at 1500 degrees and a light medium level of safe, really excellent value. What about these dehumidifiers? I use them in all my safes and you turned me on to those years ago and they do work. I have zero rust issues, they're inexpensive. The purpose of a dehumidifier very simply is, is to heat up the air and what it does is it rotates the air in the uh, safe itself. And it, and it keeps little moisture uh, bits of, of staying on your gun and starting the rust process. When you plug it into a wall, it is a no maintenance item. And so we recommend the dehumidifier over an Everdry uh, if you have a wall outlet because there's no maintenance to it. All you have to do is touch it every time you go in the safe. If it feels warm to you, it doesn't warm up hot enough to burn your hand, you feel it, you know it's working. Whereas with an Everdry, by the way, don't put damp right in your safe. It's an acid. And so what happens if it ever spills, it's going to eat anything it comes in contact with. Get something that is a non-acid like an Everdry here. And what happens is, is that you put this in the safe. It's antagonistic to water. It absorbs the water. And, but at some point, you're going to have to check it every five days to say six weeks to see what the water content is on the inside. You take it out, plug it in the wall overnight. You're right back in business again. What about lighting? 
we have found in, in doing this for 19 years, one of the things that you find is that customers who buy electronic locks like their safes more than dials. And yes, I know all the internet stuff about how electronics break down. For example, with Fort Knox, they give you a lifetime warranty on the electronics. Find out what the warranty is. You will use the safe more with an electronic clock. And with lights, once you buy lights, you're never going to go without lights again. There's no flashlight on the on the shoulder routine. So if you go in and you buy a safe, a quality safe, and you buy it with electronic clock that you can get in in two seconds, <coughs> excuse me, as, a, as opposed to 30 seconds to a minute and a half, you will use the safe more. If you, if you buy lights, which now you can easily see, they come on when you're in there, you can distinguish everything from colors of, of jewelry to, you know, your guns, you can clearly see everything, you won't go without lights again. So you got electronic right here. Yes. The, the purpose of the digital is just very simple. It's just within a very short period of time is that you're going to be able to get into the safe. You hit six numbers in the pound sign, and you're, you're in your safe as opposed to the dial where you're going to do four to the left and three to the right and two to the left and right until stop. Now, we know all about the EMP you know, concerns that customers have, and I want to, if you have a moment, let me, let me show you an anti-EMP new locking device. This is uh, exclusive at this time to Fort Knox. And I'm going to turn my back to you as I walk to the back here. Beautiful. They have sound. a new they have a new redundant lock feature on on a safe. Cool. And the redundant lock is is that you can use the digital lock on the uh, safe, and all you use the dial for is to pull the bolt up. If you ever had a problem, Fort Knox lifetime warranties their digital lock. But if you ever had a problem with the digital lock, people are afraid it's always going to happen on a weekend or a holiday. I'm not going to be able to get a hold of anybody. It turns into a fiasco. Well, now on the redundant lock feature, the dial will, will bypass the digital lock. You may use it one time in two years or, or ten years, but you'll never have the capability. If there's an EMP blast, you got your dial there. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a slight upgrade in cost where the normal electronic clock will run you $150. You're going to pay $325, you know, for a new redundant lock, but virtually it ensures that you can use a digital lock all the time, and if you ever have a problem, which is relatively rare, a catastrophic failure, you can go to your handy-dandy dial, that's your non-EMP dial, and you can, you can uh, open up your safe. What about children? And if you had to put a gun next to your bedside, what do you recommend? What kind of safe? I'm really big on personal protection boxes, and I want to emphasize to the customers, as a person who trained in the uh, police department, is that the same electronic locks that I sell in the big safes, and 90 to 95 percent of my customers are buying electronic locks, they're totally inappropriate for a, a personal protection box. An electronic lock is designed to get you in in two to three seconds. The personal protection boxes are designed to get you in in a second. Show us that. Now, if you have a stress situation where you need to get in, one of the things that's going to happen to you is you know you're going to get scared when you say, holy smokes, and that's probably not the words you're going to use. This is the real deal. And so what happens is all of a sudden you get your adrenaline up and your hand shaking that. If you press the electronic locks too fast and you keep on doing them, what you're going to do is literally lock yourself out. It's a recipe to get yourself killed. Biometrics are very haphazard in, in, uh, in, in usage, only work about 60-70% of the time. They're very fussy, the inexpensive models. A key, forget you trying to find a key and getting in. The only lock, in my opinion, and we all have our own opinions, this is my I've opinion. got about 10 of these. It I is, love these is, things. It is the perfect <laughs> lock on a safe. Quite simply, your, your control, you're in in a matter of a second. Show us that real quick, because that's if, a generic if, if you make, If you make... Okay, now, if you made a mistake on a simplex lock and you press the wrong buttons, it doesn't work. Voila, you turn to the left. You now have cleared your bad code, and you can do that as many times as you make a mistake. Take a deep breath, oosah, here you are, two and four, one, we're back in our lock again. Now, this is the only lock that I recommend to go on these safes. Further, the only heavy-duty box made on the market today is by my buds at Fort Knox, who now have added from their one to do a couple more, and they're doing three big versions of this over Christmas time. They took the smaller version and the bigger version of this. I got them coming tomorrow, by the way. And so what happens is, is that you have now, for the customer that wants something for a vehicle, Cool. You have something that right now will house three or four guns, ammo, all kinds of stuff. You put it in a vehicle, you can put it at home. Bolt it all up. I just can't tell you how much I love these boxes. And now they got their first of their single long gun 
versions of the unit. Now this one is designed to lay flat on the floor, okay, or to be put in a vehicle for transport. You just, you know, you just, we send them to an auto body place that threw bolt into the car. So you can in, put this under your bed? Yep, absolutely. Now in the future, they're going to make a model that's going to open up to the side. So they've just made five different models. This has been a long time project of ours. I'm very big on these boxes. I don't like the import stuff because to be quite frank with you, the metal in them doesn't do anything. I don't feel comfortable leaving a kid with an import safe, you know, in a room alone. I just don't. These ones, excellent metal in them. My last question, Kurt, is the delivery process. I was always so impressed with how you deliver these things. A bigger Fort Knox safe, for instance, what is your process on delivering them? Well, I pay my guys very well to do a job, and basically what it comes down to is is that, you know, we specialize in this. We got a quarter million dollars worth of trucks. We pay our guys good money to deliver with good benefits to come into your house, do it right. You have to bring three different types of metals, you know, to places. You have to build ramps. You have to put blankets on the floor with titanium aluminum plates that are very expensive. You're very secretive. And so we have no markings on our truck. If you're in a security business, one of the things that irks me is to remember that I'm in a security business. I would love to drive my truck around town and, and, and say another safe sold by CE Safes. It's worth tens of thousands of dollars. Instead of since, since we've been in business, we don't have any markings on the truck. They say CE Incorporated, you know, on the truck. They have to be marked by DOT standards in our state, but there's nothing that says safe on it. We think that if you're in a security business, you should be really quiet about what you do. And so you don't want me parked in front of your house saying safes all over the truck going in. If I was ADT in a warm company, you wouldn't care. Okay, but coming in and having a truck parked and saying safes, it just shows that you don't understand your business. And so one of the things that we try to do in this business, in a market that has been flooded with, with inexpensive, what I consider to be many poorly made safes out there. We try to emphasize the better and we try to emphasize doing it right and sometimes a small thing can turn into a big thing. Kurt, thank you so much. I want to reiterate your website is below and if anyone from the United States calls you, you'll school them on the telephone, you'll direct them to a vendor in their zip code and you do deliver throughout the whole state of Florida personally your, yourself, the shop, correct? Yes, and then we'll assist the customer any way that we can, you know, as far as there are certain areas we can sell to and there are certain areas I have to make a referral to you uh, for. The, our website, our new website uh, address is cesafes, with an S on the end, dot com. And our email site is cesafes at gmail dot com. Very simple to find. Thank you so much. I'm proud to be here. I enjoyed my time. Thank you. Thank you.